Hi, this is Doug from Fright Props. This video will give you an overview of the Fright Props Linear Actuators, or actuators for short. What is an actuator? Well, they're basically a motorized device that pushes a rod or shaft in and out. You can see this actuator here moving the shaft in and out. They can be used to raise and lower items such as Halloween and special effects props. They're similar in action to a pneumatic or air powered cylinder. Whereas with a pneumatic cylinder, air pushes the shaft in and out by pushing air to one of the sides. An actuator contains a small motor either here or inside that performs the movement of the shaft. The faster that the shaft moves, the less force it's able to exert. This speed is actually dictated by the internal motor and can't be changed, so we offer two different actuators, our standard speed and our high speed. The standard speed has a force of 70 pounds and moves the shaft one inch per second. The high speed has a force of 22 pounds and moves the shaft 9 inches per second. As you can see, the high speed is much faster, but you're not going to be able to lift as much force or push as much force. Another factor when selecting the actuator to use is the stroke. These are both 4 inch stroke actuators, which means the shaft moves out a total of 4 inches. We carry stroke sizes from 1 inch up to 24 inches. There are some major differences between pneumatic cylinders and actuators, and the choice of using an actuator for your application should take these into account. Some of the advantages of actuators are they require no compressed air, only electric, and they require no plumbing or solenoid valves. Some disadvantages are they can't exert near the force of a pneumatic cylinder and they can't run continuously and must be allowed to rest. This rest period is called duty cycle. Our linear actuators have a duty cycle of 10% or 6 minutes an hour. This means that they should not be run for more than 6 minutes an hour. That might not seem like a lot, but it's sufficient for most applications as you'll only be activating them for a few seconds at a time. Okay, so how do you run an actuator? Well, they're simply run off low voltage DC power. These are 12 volt DC actuators and require a 12 volt DC power supply. It's important that the power supply is of type called regulated. This ensures that the power supply is providing clean, constant 12 volt power. To get the full potential out of your actuators, you should use our 12 volt 10 amp regulated power supply. This is one of those here. Make sure on the back of the label that it does say 12 volt, 10 amp. We also sell 24 volt DC power supplies that look very similar, but they'll burn out the actuators. You could also use our 12 volt, 5 amp power supply, but the actuator may stall when it's under load. By simply connecting the power to the actuator's wires, It'll move the actuator in one direction. And by reversing it, it'll move it in the other direction. It's that simple. But sitting there manually swapping wires really isn't too practical and it'll get pretty boring. So we recommend using one of our peekaboo controllers, such as this. You can use a peekaboo with audio capabilities and have audio play when the actuator is moving, or use a simple peekaboo junior like this. I've pre wired this peekaboo junior to use with our actuators. You can find easy to follow wiring diagrams on our website in our support and training center at frightprops.com forward slash support. 
I'm going to attach the 12 volt 10 amp power supply right up to the peekaboo that I've pre-wired. To program a sequence, it's a simple matter of tapping the record button and then pressing the one button to move in one direction and the two button to move in the other direction. You can tap the numbered buttons for different shaft movements. Press record when done to save your changes. Now whenever the peekaboo is triggered by a push button, step mat, motion sensor, etc., it'll play back the program which will automate the actuator. And here you can see it's playing back the sequence that I quickly recorded on the peekaboo. In addition to activating the actuators, you'll need to mount and attach things to them. We offer some simple brackets for doing so. You simply put the rear bracket on by pushing the pin through. You can then attach it to something. And the same for the shaft. Very similar bracket. Just line up the holes, push the pin through, and then you can attach that to your prop. Our website contains complete linear actuator kits with everything you need to get started as well as informative wiring diagrams. I hope that you have found this video informative and you're excited to get started with linear actuators. We love to see what our customers do with our products, so please send us pictures and videos of your creations to sales at frightprops.com.